it is my great joy as you enjoy your dinner tonight um, to share with you the journey that we have shared over the past five years. Um, it is a wonderful journey, believe it or not, and it is worth uh, including in your in respective curriculum vitae that you were part of a great reform whose fruits we will never be able to enjoy in our lifetime. That I am sure. Because anything we do in education will only be as close as planting seeds, the fruits of which will only be clear a generation after. But I think this early, it is helpful to look at parts of that story and that journey from the perspective of what we can already foresee as low-lying fruits of a reform that you have supported and which we are very grateful over the past several years. First, the big story. If I may just... May I... What is the kicker? These are numbers, but this is the big story. If you look at this kinder over the past six years, because of your great help, do you know that five-year-old Filipinos before 2008 never really seriously thought that they would be welcome to school? And that's why in grade one, on the first week of schooling, you have six-year-olds crying because their mothers have left them. When we institutionalized kindergarten, just look at the public education increase. More than a million have gone to kindergarten. Maybe that's one of the early fruits of the K-12 reform. Some people say, that the increase total over the six year period is around 2.3 million new students in public school. Some say that is because of increasing tuition of private schools. But please look at the data. In elementary, we grew by around 700,000 more in public schools. But look at private schools elementary. It's almost flat. That means we were able to bring in more poor students into the elementary grades. That's around 700,000 more. In high school, the story is generally the same. We increased by around half a million and the, uh, the uh, numbers in private schools have remained largely the same. It is a wonderful story because it tells us it is possible to work on these reforms and bring in students. Part of that uh, uh, great story also tells us that In 2008, we have around 2.9 million Filipinos from age 5 to 15 who were unable to go to school, out of school use. The good news is, by 2013, our population of out of school youth has gone down by 1.7 million, bringing down the incidence of out of school youth from 11.7% to 5.2%. This is the study of PIDS. Hindi po ito binayaran ng DepEd. And we were happy to just receive this report. 
I will tell you later on why this is critical and what your role is in terms of these numbers. So please have a photographic memory because I will have a test for those who will um, finish their dinner early. Uh, you will not be able to take dessert if you are not able to answer my question and do my assignment. That is made possible because I think this is the, the, the most committed administration to education. Since 2009, with a budget of around 170 billion, the budget of them and alone, hindi po kasama ang Jed at saka ang, uh, ang Tesla, has grown to a budget of 365 billion this year. It is not only about um, uh, the increase in budget. If you look at the number of students and the, the support per student per year, we used to have only 8,800 per student support every year. It has grown to more than double that at 17,300 per student per year. And that is an important um, contribution of the Aquino administration, which I hope you will keep pushing for. Classrooms that were built nationwide is around 142,000 this year, if we include this year. In Mindanao alone, but just the first um, uh, uh, years until 2013, we were able to build at least 18,132 classrooms. That's 27% of what we build uh, in the whole Philippines. No? And it is critical that we're able to count those classrooms because they're actually included in our EBAEs. No? Um, this year, uh, we will be building around 41,000 classrooms nationwide because we will be including our classrooms for senior high school. Teachers, nationwide, we were able to hire 167,000, including the ones this year. I am happy to know that in Mindanao, we were able to hire more close to 36,000 in all the regions of Mindanao. And uh, I think that would be bigger than any you would have ever seen in uh, the past decade in Philippine history. Some of the continuing challenges are in areas where services of government may be very, very limited. We have been tracking schools that are farthest from the center. And a lot of those schools are in Mindanao. We're happy to report that in 2011, the around 7,800 schools were unenergized. Many of them are in, in uh, the bulldogs of Mindanao. In uh, 2013, when we last tracked, just 6,000 of those continue to be unenergized. But the good news is this, that DepEd will be able to provide IT packages for all schools, elementary and high school, at least one package uh, that students can use before the end of this administration, including those that are unenergized. And we'll be using solar, micro hydro, and the like, and connecting um, uh, those that are within the grid. Um, this is critical because Education, if it were to be uh, equitable, should provide even the farthest schools with the same services that you find in the cities, or at least similar to what you find in the cities. Thus far, that has been the policy of DepEd. If a city school gets X number and of items in a science and math equipment, even the farthest multi-grade school should get exactly the same. 
if they're able to get computers, the farthest school must be able to get the computers also. And uh, that is part of what we feel is our contribution to the farthest schools. No? Um, in terms of those unenergized schools, um, we try to partner, if this is not within government budget, we try to partner with industry. And in insta many instances, we also provide uh, solar generators to the farthest schools. In the Quito um, uh, budget and debt, we look for partners, some of them foreign, many of them local. Uh, we have identified 1,200 groups of students who may need a boat so that they can go to school dry and not swim. I'm happy to report that we have already have that number and we have pledges so that if there are communities where students can cross with the help of a boat, then we, we partner and identify them. Um, this is a, an appeal to superintendents and, and directors who are here. We have the list, this came from you. If you want to add to this list, we will be happy to receive them. If you're going to donate a boat, we will be happier. For schools, especially high schools, that are, where students walk more than five kilometers back and forth, we have partnered with several foreign and local groups to distribute bicycles. Last count, we needed around 36,000 bicycles. But we don't want students to just bike. We want them to do that with a helmet, to, we train them on road safety, and we do not distribute bikes in municipalities and cities that do not provide biking lanes. So we push local government to create the bike lanes so that the students can go to school safe. No need for pamasahe. Uh, um, We've been distributed around a thousand of those bikes. Um, if any of you are happy to donate bikes, we will be happy to distribute them to areas that are ready to receive them. We do not allow students to do that without their helmets. Feeding last year, we have around half a million that are severely wasted. The government thought that we should feed not only the severely wasted, but even those that are wasted. So that we should be able to feed more than a million elementary students from kinder to grade 6 this year with a budget of 16 pesos per meal per day for 120 days. The, the money will be downloaded to the um, uh, uh, listen regional directors. We will uh, ask you to make sure that this is implemented well by July, and uh, we want the program to be in place so that before the Christmas break, every Filipino child in our schools are back to normal way, if not um, uh, like Yusef Nino. Um, the last 365 days of this administration, I call on you, since you have joined us from the beginning, to join us until the very end. You know, we're, we're running a marathon. And you've walked with us and run with us for five years. And that's why we are here today. We can almost see the finish line. It is just one last mile. Ilang tulog na lang, mararating na po natin yung katapusan ng marathon. Ito na lang po yung namuhuling mga assignment para sa ating lahat. One, can you identify areas in Mindanao that are still unreached? Can you report that to the superintendent who's supposed to report that to the regional director and we will create a program or maybe a multi-grade school for those students. Assignment number one. Yeah. Assignment number two. 
those of you who are in the cities of Mindanao, do you find street children? O yung street children ba sa Maynila lang at sa Luzon? In each of those cities where there is there is a proliferation of street children, please report that to them. Ed. We have created a system whereby students who do not wish to go to school, the school will go to them via a carton which is filled up with reading materials. If they are not uh, beneficiaries of field health, once they enroll in the carton classroom, they will automatically be referred to field health. If they are not beneficiaries, the families of the CCD, we will refer them to DSWD and we will provide them with the same services we provide every child enrolled in school. This is assignment number two. May nakita ba kayong street child? Can you report that to the nearest Deb Ed reach, uh, uh, superintendent and we will partner with, uh, with a company or, or with a, an NGO so that we can provide the services of a Cariton classroom. That is the in-between to mainstreaming them uh, and we have a curriculum for that. Huh? Are there other students in rural areas, coastal or farmlands, that cannot go to school because the harvest season is the time when we start schooling? That Ed is willing to bend our, uh, the curriculum, change it, so that we tailor fit the curriculum and the calendar to the needs of those communities. If there are children that you know do not, uh, who, are, who are not allowed to go to school, report that to them then. And we will create the program so that the school adapts to their needs wherein the students are forced to do the regular mainstream formal schooling. Have you ever gone inside a detention center? Have you seen that most of the time, those who never finish elementary or high school are also the ones who are inside the prison? DepEd has a program whereby those who are in prison houses, detention centers, even maximum security, are provided with the same educational opportunities that they never had when they were outside. Maganda po itong programa ito sa National Believing. Ito po yung graduates natin this year. They, um, wala po kaming gastos dyan. Kasi sa loob po lang nalibig, meron din mga graduates ng UP, Lasal, Ateneo. Uh, <laughs> Magkatalino po yan sila. Nandun din po. Ang aming pong bayad sa kanila, pag nagturo sila, yung kanilang sentensya, bababa, bababawasan. Meron po kami equivalency. Maganda po niyan, the students, if they enroll, at sila'y nakagraduate, bumababa din yung sentensya. E di win-win, win-win po yung ating program. At saka sa po Pilipinas po, ito lang programa na to, ang parang perfect attendance. <laughs> Napakaganda po. Uh, but seriously, my most moving experience of a graduation was inside Dead Ed Max, sa maximum security. Because they are so um, uh, serious in their studies, both the teacher and the student. Meron na sa Mindanao ng mga areas na hindi pa din nila papasok. Tell us, because I am sure in those areas, detention centers, they are unschooled. This is the perfect time to bring them back to school. Please report them to us. We do affirmative action, especially for our brothers and sisters who study in madrasa schools but do not take up secular subjects. And part of the, of the DepEd's uh, uh, affirmative action is to ensure that we work 
with this uh, madrasa and bring in the secular subjects aside from Islamic values and uh, Arabic. Uh, we have around more than a million Muslim learners in various programs, both formal and informal within the debt and system. Indigenous peoples are also at the fringes of many of our programs. And even if we open up the mainstream formal education to them, sometimes our teachers or their classmates do not know how to relate to them, so they don't feel welcome in those schools. Part of the mission of DepEd is to create within the educational system a curriculum that is culturally sensitive. So for example, we have created the first IP senior high school among the Tibolis, and we try to bridge their cultural traditions, their indigenous knowledge with development so that education now becomes the bridge so that they can nurture, we can nurture their, their culture, their traditions while at the same time allow them the benefits of modernization. We have mapped nationwide in every barangay with names and addresses, around 1.9 million students who used to be out of school. Kasama po namin dito ang National Youth Commission at sila po yung at, at kasama po yung iba pang mga ahensya ng gobyerno. Um, out of the what the close to 2 million mapped, half a million more than half a million are already enrolled. Yung pinakita ko pong data kanina, about 1.2 million na lang in 2013 yung not in school. Ang tansya ko po ngayon, that should just be around less than a million. This is my assignment to you. Marami na ako assignment. Um, can you make sure if you meet anyone who do you think has not finished elementary or high school? The only thing we ask of you is to get the name, the address, and the year of last school. Report to DepEd, the nearest DepEd school. And if you have an email, email action at deped.gov.ph. Madali lang po yung assignment ko. Pag naglalakad kayo sa Cagayan de Oro, may wash your car boy. Buksan nyo yung bitala niya, tanay nyo. Boy, tapos ka ng elementary. Pag hindi pa, kunin po nyo yung pangalan. Saan siya nakatira? O, oh, what corner you found him. We will work with the CSWD. We will look for that boy. Inside your houses, meron ba kayong kasambahay na yung anak o kahit siya mismo has not finished high school? What a wonderful gift if you can enroll your kasambahay in the nearest deaf school. They don't have to go to school every day. We can give him or her modules and he can meet our teachers every so often, once or twice a week. Isn't that a wonderful gift after two years? You bring that kasambahay to a graduation, right? And you are the Nino. Do you own a company? Are there newspaper boys who go there at 6 o'clock in the morning to deliver newspapers? Can you ask your guard to ask that newspaper boy whether he has finished high school? Or janitors, waiters? And the little pula sign ko, text us, email us, pangalan, address, isang million na lang po yan. That is the, the uh, last mile for that end. And we need your help because we have the program. We just need to do child finding of those who have not been uh, serviced over the past decade. We are on our fifth year of implementation of the K-12 reform. We want to make sure that K-12 
is not only a national program, but is very much grounded in what it takes to be a person from Mindanao. The last two years will bring us to a curriculum that should be very, very grounded. Why talk about national heroes when in our schools we have not met and do not know our local heroes in Mindanao? Part of the curriculum, core curriculum, is an attempt to bring down and ground the curriculum to the story of Mindanao, which very few Filipinos know about. Pagbasahin po natin yung uh, historia ng Pilipinas. It was written by foreigners or people from Luzon who do not know anything about Mindanao. Part of the K-12 reform is an appeal for those of you who live and who know Mindanao to rewrite our story and our histories. We have divided the opportunities to four tracks, academic, sports, arts and design, and tech form. All of those tracks should also be grounded in what you find in Mindanao. So that if you are graduates of K-12 senior high school, you should not provide uh, our students with programs where they have to go to the big cities to find a job. The programs must be very much anchored on opportunities that are already in the locality. This is how we identify our senior high schools nationwide. We ask the students, Anong pangarap mo sa buhay? We ask the parents, What do you foresee your children to take? What did we discover? What the parents want are not what the students like. So we brought them to a dialogue and then we asked them to look over what those courses and tracks are that they wish to take. And then we asked the school principals to also discuss this with local chambers of commerce or the LGUs. And then we asked the principals, if you have 500 graduates of beauty care, how many heads do you, can, do you think these students can work on so that they will have a job in the next five years? We discovered that in some localities, there are more beauty care experts than there are women who need to be beautified. So, we told the principal, go back to the drawing board. You must only have enough of each of those tracks or skills or competencies. So, we dialogue with external uh, 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 group, and then that's what the local divisions, the divisions, came up with as our numbers for the senior high school programs. No? Nationwide, we determined that uh, grade 11 students in Mindanao, uh, for example, we would have around 260,000. Cohort 1 in, in, uh, in 2011, and then cohort 2 in 2017. So, more or less, mga 500,000 during the full implementation of K-12. Out of these, mga 170,000, we think, will continue to enroll in a depth-ed senior high school. And we want to give some opportunities for public school students, if they so wish, to take up a program in a local university, a state university, or a private senior high school. So we determined, siguro mga close to 90,000 will choose that. Based on those numbers, we have uh, determined that around 6,000 classrooms needed to be built in Mindanao for the next nine months, in time for June 2016. All of those are now in place because I just signed this morning um, the request for 30,000 classrooms nationwide uh, for procurement in the next few months. Uh, um, that will mean that in Mindanao, 
we would need to hire around 10,000 teachers on the first year and another 10,000 by 2017. Um, and there will be a total of 2,200 plus senior high schools in Dep and Mindanao. I'm sorry. Uh, just 1,549 versus 2,200 uh, high schools, that means some will remain as junior high schools in Mindanao. When we look at the, uh, what students will be taking, this is how the profile will look like. Around 136,000 graduates of grade 10 will be taking up academic track divided into four streams. Engineering, science, technology, and math. Ito yung mga mahilig mag-aral. Um, at hindi nakaka-nose bleed habang nagbabasa ng mga algebraic formula. Yung mahilig magpayaman, they will take up accountancy, business, and management. Yung mga mahilig magpolitiko o magsulat, will take up hounds, Yung hindi alam ang gusto ko rin, they will take general academic. Um, but total, around uh, uh, 136,000 students will be in the academic track. In TechVoc, we'll be close to that number. Uh, and, and, and we have divided TechVoc into the different competencies uh, under TESTA. They will all be TESTA certified. Those who take the TechVoc tri track will be invited to take the assessment of TESLA so that by the end of grade 12, when they graduate, they get a high school diploma, but also SANA, they get a TESLA NC1, but even hopefully NC2. Um, and then I am hoping that there will be a significant number in Mindanao who will take up arts and design especially indigenous arts and cultural traditions. But sana a certain number will also take up sports. And the sports that Mindanao is known for. Boxing, swimming, and the like. Um, total number of student slots will be around 300,000 uh, in the whole of Mindanao. For public school students who will enroll in a TVI, that's a text test accredited uh, uh, institution, a local university, a state university, or a private senior high school, we are asking Congress, please support us, to provide a voucher system so that if you are a graduate of a public school and you choose a program that is in a non debt in school. Sana, Congress will allow us to provide 100% voucher value for you. If you are an ESC grantee, that means uh, in, you are studying in a private high school and you are already a GASPE uh, 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 um, uh, beneficiary, we are asking that you be given an 80% value of the voucher if you enroll in a non debt school. And if it's you're in a local university or state university, 50% of the voucher. As proposed, we are asking that sa cap national capital region, the highest amount would be 22.5. We try to uh, 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 level the playing field by looking at the highly urbanized in Mindanao, will get as high as 20,000 per student per year. And in other cities and municipalities, 17,500. So the gap between the urbanized cities and NCR uh, is not very big. No? Um, we felt, and when we studied the, the numbers, many of the SUCs and private schools in Mindanao, you may not even need a top-up beyond what DepEd is proposing as a voucher, especially if you get the 100% uh, uh, voucher uh, benefit. 
Our estimate nationwide is that for the 1.2 million graduates of grade 10 every year in that 10, and around 350,000 enrolled in private schools, we think that around 800,000 public school students will re-enroll in the decade schools. And that's why uh, we're preparing 1,500 senior high schools in Mindanao for that. But we think that nationwide, around 400,000 students will choose programs outside of the public schools. And that's why we're preparing a voucher system for them. And in our, our assumption is that grad in Mindanao, graduates of private schools will continue to enroll in the private schools. In uh, uh, nationwide, no, uh, we have given 2,800 plus permits to senior high schools who are preparing for 2016, private. So if DepEd nationwide is around 5,900, and let's say this will grow up to 3,000, no, then uh, we should have around 9,000 or so, close to 9,000, senior high schools nationwide for students in grade 10 to enroll in. Um, the good news is that by 2016, DepEd together with all private and state universities who will open senior high school will be ready to take up all the students that are graduates of grade 10. The sad news is, alam niyo ba, yearly, the number of graduates of grade 10 who proceed to college or some higher educational skills is only around 50%. So nakagraduate ng high school, after high school, they don't even bother to apply or enroll in college. What we want is that all those who finish grade 10 are encouraged, if not uh, uh, harassed, to take up at least two more years of, of education, either in a free public high school or with a voucher system in another non debt school. In Mindanao alone, do you know that 260,000 are graduates of grade 10 every year. Only around 130,000 re-enroll in college. With your help, we want to encourage and ensure that all of them, all of them take up at least two more years of education. After two years, the fruit of that should be sana hindi naman yung trabaho nila pang vocational lang o below minimum wage. A graduate of a senior high school will have a certification at the very least TESDA, if not a senior high school diploma that should allow them a salary range that is much higher than just the minimum wage. And that is the simple dream of DepEd for all of our students in Mindanao. If you go to college, 130,000, there's no problem. Even without government, government help, they will go to college. If you go to college, when you get to grade 10, I'm just here, I'm going to be a husband, I'm going to be a husband, I'm not going to do anything. And our hope is that you will be continuing to partner with us so that if they graduate grade 10, we can handhold them and say, Meron pang two more years. This will give you a greater opportunity for the future. Just to give you some maps, medyo maliit po to, but I think you can go to the respective divisions. Hindi po ito suntok sa buwan. Pinag-aralan po ng mga Tagalog, kaya medyo nadili kami ito ng konti. Uh, every division, for example, Cotabato, has identified every single them at school have included in the map the private schools, SUCs, that they will be working with, and they have the number 
all of schools, uh, all mapped out so that students can see if I am a, a resident of this barangay, where are the nearest private schools or dedicated schools that will be offering senior high schools. Doon po sa Agusan, meron din po silang mapa. Um, kasama yata yung Agusan, Marsha, di ba? Pero hindi ko mabasa yung mga pangalan ng mga eskwelahan. Um, nandito po lahat ng mga uh, schools by name and they are also mapped all around the uh, Agusan del Norte. Bayugan, for example, uh, has identified eight uh, uh, schools. This is the final list. If they are deaf at schools, they are already with DPWH for the construction of classrooms. Um, and students um, uh, can access the website so they can find out what programs in particular will be offered in each of these schools. Ang Shardao, uh, the whole island province, uh, has identified all of those schools. There should be no reason why grade 10 graduates cannot find a school within the island to enroll in. Every municipality will have at least one, if not two. Even the smallest six-class municipality will have a senior high school. That we ensure. Every province will have at least one sports academy. Every province will have at least one arts and design senior high school. Uh, Zamboanga City, which is a little bigger, has identified the schools, including the non deficit schools that will be offering uh, uh, the senior high schools. Our appeal to you is to join us on this last mile for that plan. We are almost there, we could see the finish line, and you have stood by us over the past five years. We have had many victories. 2.3 million enrolled in DepTed over the past six years, increase in enrollment. More than a million of those in kinder. Many of our population, even the farthest barangay, can be reached now. If not by establishing a school, by boats, bicycles, and wonder of wonders, information technology, even in unenergized communities, we can put up solar panels so they can be connected. There is no reason for us to stop at this point. In fact, it is a wonderful time for us to come together and pat each other at the back and say, we're almost there. We can see the finish line. Let us continue to stand for education. We should be the first province, city, municipality to wipe out OSYs. Alam niyo po, yung kauna-unahang probinsya na nawalan ng OSYs dahil lahat po na hindi nakatapos ng elementary and high school na enroll na namin bahay-bahay, in isa-isa po is Batanes. Palagi ko yung una po ng city, hindi ko po na i-announce kasi baka uh, maun siya may. The first city in the whole Philippines who is almost there kasi nakita ko po yung kanilang data and may be able to announce before the whole world that they are OSY free because we have a note, is in Mindanao. Hulaan nyo. It would be a wonderful legacy for the next generation to be able to say, not only that, but kasama ko kayo. Walang Pilipino bobo. Walang Pilipino pinagkaitan ng pangarap. And kasama namin kayo, ang assignment ko, isa lang. Email action at deped.gov.ph Pag may makita kayong hindi nag-aaral between 5 to 15, report. We will go to them. Pag meron kayong kilala na hindi nakatapos, the only thing you need to do is report. We will create a program for them. 
If you happen to pass by a community na walang eskwelahan, the only thing you need to do is report. We will look for partners so we can reach that community. Siguro po, hindi mahirap na assignment yung binibigay namin. Before the end of this year, maybe before the end of this administration, we should be able to reach out to every Filipino to ensure that no child, no learner, no Filipino is left behind. Maraming po salamat. Peace be upon you.